object with you and you simply say, hey, you know, I want to save this object. And automatically, there's, there should be some magical things happening behind the scene who will say, okay, you're storing this object. I will store that data in the database without you have to write the SQL query. Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about ORM which stands for Object Relational Mapping. Now this concept is there in multiple languages if you work on Java, Python, .NET, it doesn't matter. This is available. The only thing is, should we use it and why do we even have to use ORM concept? Now before we talk about when to use it, let's talk about what is ORM. Now think about this. If you talk about any object-oriented programming language, or maybe a language which supports object-oriented concepts, the most important thing there is object, right? An object knows something, an object does something. Now, when you say object knows something, it does that with the help of variables. And when you say the object does something, it does that with the help of methods. Now, let's talk about the variables here. So why do we use variable? We use variable to store data. Of course, right, the entire software industry is working for information, right? To store it, to retrieve it, to process it. Now, let's say if you store this data in the variable, of course, you are basically using an object to store that. And then while you are using the application, the data is there. But what if you want to make that data persistent? You want to store that data somewhere so that you can use it for a long time. And that's where we have a concept of databases, right? So you want to store this data in the database. It can be any relational database. It can be Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, doesn't matter. If you can store data, which is therefore permanent, we say that is per persistent storage. So how do you store this data, which is in the object into a database? Now, one of the way you can store data is something called SQL, right? Now, when you talk about DBMS, if you want to work with them, specific, specifically our DBMS, we use a language called SQL. Now, using SQL, you can retrieve data, you can store data, you can update data, you can alter the structure of a table, you can do everything with the SQL language. And it's a very powerful language, right? That means if you want to be a software developer, you need to focus on a language, let's say Java or uh, C Sharp, and in the back end, you have to also learn how to work with database with the help of SQL. But what if we can just smooth this part? So let's say if you talk about SQL, what you normally do is, uh, if you want to store a particular object in the database, or let's say object details in the database, you first of all, take all the values in the variable. So let's say you have student object in which you have student ID, student, uh, which is row number, and then you have a name, you have address, let's say favorite subject. Now, all these things are available in the object format, right? In the variables format. Now you want to store that in database. So you will use a SQL tip, SQL query. You will say insert into student. In the bracket, you will specify the values. Let's say role number 25, name Naveen. My favorite subject is let's say Java. So you will store everything in this table with the help of SQL query. Not just for inserting, for fetching data as well, you will say select query. To update something, you will use update query, right? So that means you have to learn SQL as well. But what if I say, you don't have to learn SQL. What if in Java, let's start any, any programming language, you have an object with you and you simply say, hey, you know, I want to save this object. And automatically, there's, there should be some magical things happening behind the scene who will say, okay, you're storing this object. I will store that data in the database without you have to write the SQL query. So basically as a programmer, you don't have to write SQL query. But behind the scenes, someone will do it, right? So your DBMS only works with SQL queries. So you can't say there's no SQL. There is SQL, but you as a programmer are not writing it. So someone has to help us, right? And that's where we have some tools available. Now these tools are called ORM tools, which stands for Object Relational Mapping. So you use this tool in between. You have a Java framework or any any language for that matter. And then you have a tool here and then you have a database. So you are actually talking to the tool and tool will store the data in the database. Who is responsible to make the queries, the SQL queries, this tool, right? You don't have to do that. But is it really possible? Can we just save the data in database just by using the object? The answer is yes. You know, if you try to map, think about this. How do you create an object? So let's, let's talk about Java here. In Java, if you want to create the object, you need a class. Now this, this class is your design. The object is the instance. 
For one class, you can have multiple objects. Let's say if you talk about students, you will create only one student class and you will be having multiple objects. So let's say in a classroom, you have 20 students. You will be having different object for each student. Will they have a different role number? They will have a different uh, name and they, will also, they might also have a different subject which they like, right? And if you try to understand the table structure, how do you create a tables in database? Basically, you have a box in which you have multiple columns and multiple rows, right? But if you talk about at the start of the application, you don't have any data, right? You just have a column structure. You have your roll number column, you have your name column, you have your favorite subject column, right? So can you say this class and this table, they are relatable? Because the class name is your table name. The class variables or the variables you have mentioned there are your columns. What about the objects? See, every time you create a new object, they will have different data, right? So can I say each object becomes one row? So let's say if you have 20 objects, you got 20 rows here. So we are basically trying to relate the object-oriented concepts with the database concepts. And that is what called object relational mapping. Okay, so you don't have to do anything. As a programmer, you, you will simply say, hey, ORM tool, maybe if you talk about Java, we have uh, Hibernate. Uh, if you talk about Django, which is for Python, they also have ORM concept. If you talk about .NET also, they have entity framework. So basically you use this tool in between and you say, hey tool, this is my object, save that in database. ORM will say, okay, uh, done it or it's done. Okay, so that's how they do it. So they, they write all the queries for you. So behind this, and if you check, they actually create a select query. So if you say, hey, ORM framework, I have this role number, I want data. So basically we use some, let's say get methods. In this case, it will fire a select query. When you say save, it will fire a insert query. When you say, let's say save, but the data is already there, it will fire the update query. Okay, and what if you say you want to say delete, it will fire the delete query. So everything is everything will be done by your ORM tool. Now it's great, right? It has a lot of pros because as a programmer, you are saving your time. Do we have any cons of this? Do we have any drawbacks? And the answer is yes. See, the thing is, initially when you start using ORM, you'll be very happy. But then as your project becomes more complex, you will write some, you need some complex queries. You need to do some complex task. At that point, maybe some ORM will not give you that feature of doing extra things. And actually you can write the SQL queries as well. So example, if we talk about JPA, which is a specification for Java, you can write JPQL or HQL for Hibernate, which is Hibernate query language, which looks like SQL, but then we talk about objects and classes there. So yes, if you have some customized query, you can do that, but that's also a drawback, right? Ultimately, you need to write some queries if you want to do some complex task. And there's also a debate on speed. Yes, it, ORM will help you to make your project faster in terms of development, but not in terms of running it. Because see, every time you call the ORM, it is taking extra time to create the queries for you. So again, that's a debate. Will it really slow down? But if you really think about it, it might slow down your uh, application. But again, that's a fraction of second. It will not even, you will not even realize when you are using it. But yes, if you do a performance test, which a lot of people do, where you will hardly see a difference of milliseconds, in, that, that is debatable now. But yes, SQLs, SQL queries are faster if you write it by yourself. And maybe there are some good way of writing SQL queries. So let's say if you have experience of let's say 10 years in the SQL or database thing, you know what type of query you can write to, to fetch the data faster. But then when you use ORM, they have their own way of building queries. Maybe that is not completely optimized. Again, those are debatable, but should we really use ORM? I would say yes, is because it helps you to build a product faster and with less bugs. Because the moment you start writing code as a human, you can make mistakes and then ultimately you will spend time resolving it and uh, it's good to save time, right? So yeah, that's about ORM, which stands for Object Relational Mapping. There are multiple implementations as I mentioned. For Java, we can use Hibernate or any JP implementation for that matter. For Django, we have Django ORM for uh, .NET also we have uh, entity framework. So basically if you want to know more, I will put the links in description for the Hibernate for Java and uh, Django ORM in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos. Bye-bye.